Ferrovial has announced its first quarter 2019 results. Consolidated revenues reach 1.2 billion euros, up 5% like for like. A 345 million euro provision was registered to account for expected future costs in the construction of US projects. Ferrovial's toll roads showed strong EBITDA growth with over 60% contribution from the US. Managed lanes in Texas keep generating double-digit growth, boosted by the opening of the NT35W. The ETR407 in Canada recorded a 5% EBITDA growth despite extreme weather conditions in the first two months of the year. Heathrow achieved its 29th consecutive month of growth, welcoming a record 17.9 million passengers in the first quarter of 2019. 117 million euros in dividends were received from infrastructure assets, with the ETR increasing its dividend by 10.5%. Net cash ex infrastructure projects stood at 910 million euros. Ernesto, Ferrovial has posted again a brilliant performance of the infrastructure portfolio, but it has registered a provision in construction. What went wrong? You're right, Begonia. Infrastructure has delivered excellent results. So what's going on in construction? Well, we have uh, taken a provision for works that are really on very early stages. I mean, works in the US that are either finalizing the design process or are um, starting with construction. So uh, why, why are we taking this hit when we have so much to go still to deliver? Well, basically there's a cycle in the US where you have a surge in activity, subcontractors are uh, raising prices, raw material as well, and uh, you cannot um, close prices until you have final design, right? So that is running away from us and we don't have enough own resources to deliver at the pace we, we wanted. Traffic in the 407 ETR has fallen for the first time in many years. What has happened there and what do you expect for the rest of the year? Well, uh, this first quarter really had uh, bad weather compared to last year. We, we had several days of freezing rain and those days uh, you don't have kids attending school, didn't have buses traveling and um, uh, you can see that this was quite dramatic compared to last year. When you compare days uh, with similar weather uh, and business days, it's pretty much flat, right? So we should expect like a flat performance in traffic uh, for the year. Your managed lanes in Texas, they've had another superb quarter. What is behind the continued success? Well, the area is, uh, is booming and our roads are more connected, let's say. So you have other openings in the area and that means that you have like the fast network being connected and that means that uh, all the uh, drivers um, know the network and they can use it more efficiently. One of the managed lanes is supposed to pay a dividend soon, the NTE. When can we expect this dividend and how much will they distribute? Well, as we mentioned in the past, it has to be at the end of the year and we always said $125 million. Uh, well, the performance is better and uh, luckily we should be getting a little bit more. What about Ausol? It's been classified for sale. Why is this? Well, Ausol has been with us for a while. It's a very good asset that is still um, um, growing healthily, but from an industrial point of view, we've done our job and it's a good time to rotate to financial investors and uh, move the proceeds to um, uh, other assets we are developing. Moving on to airports, are you seeing any impact from the Brexit uncertainty on London Heathrow's traffic? Not yet, really. I mean, Heathrow is uh, posting records every month. Uh, Long-haul traffic is uh, performing really well, retail income as well, so uh, it has um, an underlying demand. I mean, Heathrow needs more capacity, right? And that's what expansion is about. Um, uh, you can uh, really expect this performance to go on. Brexit is not over yet. Uh, but if it's a smooth, um, um, kind of soft, we should see this performance going on. You've reached, for the first time, a commercial deal with the airlines. What is the impact from this deal? Well, we are happy that we agreed this with the airlines. Um, both sides are happy. Basically, we avoided a regulatory process and um, well, airlines get a discount in the, in the current prices. And for us, it works. We get protection uh, to uh, downside performance in terms of traffic. Of course, we also share part of the upside um, in case of uh, additional traffic, but this is um, excellent in this regard to prepare for, uh, for expansion. But of course, you see in these results a small discount, 11 million pounds in aeronautical income, that is part of the rebate. Why is it that traffic falls in AGS, the regional airports, but it grows in Heathrow? 
Well, it's a different mix of airlines. Uh, Low-cost airlines in the regional airports are more affected by um, uh, uh, fuel prices going up and uh, also demand is a little bit um, softer. Um, Long-hauling Heathrow is also more related to business, so it's different uh, profile. As for your services division, which is for sale, how far along is the process? Well, it's uh, going on schedule and you have, uh, uh, during May, we expect to get um, non-binding offers for the assets, except for Amy. Amy is not part of the process, maybe in the future or a separate process, but not now. Can you please give us some colour on the cash flow generation this quarter? Uh, well, this uh, quarter we reached 910 million euros with a better working capital performance than um, last year and uh, also with uh, healthy dividends from our infrastructure assets. Ernesto, after the construction provision and looking into the future, can Ferrovial shareholders sleep well at night? Well, we want to sleep well and if we sleep well, they should be sleeping well. And the uh, um, uh, main situation is to uh, be able to control the bidding uh, process and delivering construction. It's a key part of the strategy because our strategy is about getting uh, incredible infrastructure assets uh, at competitive prices. And that means getting them when the, we have a greenfield operation. And construction plays a key role there. But of course, um, it has to avoid risks and create value, not uh, incur losses. So it's our top priority and we are focusing on that. Thank you very much, Ernesto. Thank you, Begoña.